Danny Ago in the live chats wants to know what are the best Les Exclusives fragrances by Chanel, both in terms of um, which ones maybe I like the most or which ones sell the most. So let's say quality-wise, in terms of smell, which ones I like the most. Um, well, first subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to find out and thumb up this video. <laughs> Uh, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also follow me or join me on Patreon. Super Deco well spelled together to gain access to extra perks there as well. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. And thank you to all my uh, co-chatters in the live uh, section of this live stream. I live stream every Saturday, you guys. Everybody's welcome to join in and uh, take part in the filming of all of these videos. It's a lot of fun and we get to talk about a lot of different topics that we're interested in. So for me personally, you know, I have this big issue with, with Chanel when they discontinued their eau de toilettes um less exclusive eau de toilettes and um introduced their eau de parfum uh concentrations they did that just to up the price because in 2016 when that shift happened that was the same year when louis vuitton introduced their exclusives perfume range and they were all in the eau de parfum concentration so i think what chanel really did there was they wanted to compete with Louis as they always do. They compete with Louis, they compete with Dior, all of these major brands compete against each other. They compete with Hermes. So Chanel thought to themselves, oh darn, <clears throat> they were one of the first to start this game. Hold on, I need some water. Uh, they were the first to start this game, one of the first to start the Les Exclusives uh, game. And in fact, already in the 80s, uh, they brought back four historic fragrances from the 20s Cui de Rossi, Bois de Zille, Gardenia and number 22 well number 22 in America was already still in production but those four were kind of the inception of the Les Exclusives fragrances and then the whole thing was expanded in the 2000s into I don't know 10 or 11 Les Exclusives fragrances in eau de toilette form then some of them were also, some of them became available as pure extracts, parfums. We already had the parfums of the original four, Cuid de Roussy, Gardenia, Bois de Zille, and number 22. But extra pure extracts came along. But then in 2016, when Louis Vuitton came along with its uh, Eau de Parfum collection of fragrances, Chanel thought, damn, we're still in the Eau de Toilette game. They did not issue Eau de Parfums. In the, in the 2000s when they created their broader spectrum of the Les Exclusives range, encompassing, you know, Coromandel, uh, Sycamore, um, 28 La Pausa, Bel Respiro, 31 Rue Cambon, um, and then the others were to come later, being Beige, 1932, Jersey, Misia, and so on. So anyway... Eau de Toilettes, which were then discontinued in favor of the Eau de Parfums so that Chanel could up the prices to make the prices similar, if not the same, as Louis' Eau de Parfum prices. Because they wanted to compete. They wanted to stay on the same level. When they reformulated, um, or rather, when they reconcentrated their fragrances into the Eau de Parfums, a lot went lost in terms of the quality of what these perfumes used to be. And a lot went lost because uh, the inception of the Eau de Toilettes was uh, thanks to uh, Jacques Polge and mostly Jacques and uh, Sheldrake, Christopher Sheldrake. Those were the Eau de Toilettes. Then Jacques was going to retire. He took his nepotism at the highest degree. He called his son to come in and take his job. So Olivier Polge took over right before the shift happened, the switch happened from Eau de Toilette to Eau de Parfum. So Olivier Polge has a very different approach to perfumery than his father, Jacques. Jacques has a cold, calculated elegance in how these perfumes are cut. They're cut like diamonds with edgy crystal points. While Olivier 
cuts off all the edges. He rounds everything up. He softens all the curves and the edges. The opposite of what his father did. So you could imagine he's left with this... <sighs> back catalog of, of perfumes, uh, les exclusives, being available in eau de toilette form, and he has the task to switch them over and turn them all into eau de parfums. He made them warmer. He rounded them up. This helped some fragrances, but it butchered others. So that being said, for me to answer your question, you see, it's not so easy to answer your question because I prefer the eau de toilettes of the Les Exclusives range, but they don't exist anymore in most cases. Cologne still exists as an eau de toilette, even though it's a Cologne. That's a mess. But the eau de Cologne of Chanel uh, is still amazing. Um, I loved all of the eau de toilettes. They were all so amazing and magical. The eau de parfums are a mess for the most part. So let me answer your question in terms of eau de parfums, of what is available now, what everybody can readily purchase. I, I, I could tell you my personal uh, choice is um, number 22, Gardenia, La Pausa, those three <laughs> it's those three for me um of the ones that existed as auto toilettes before right number 22 gardenia and la pausa i would add to that list uh the perfumes that were launched after 2016 the perfumes launched after 2016 were launched as eau de parfums so those fragrances launched after 2016 never saw a release uh, in eau de toilette form so we have no comparison but of the fragrances launched after 2016 i would add to this list le lion de chanel so now we have four um yeah that's it gardenia eau de toilette number 22 uh, sorry Gardenia Eau de Parfum, number 22 Eau de Parfum, La Pausa Eau de Parfum, and Le Lion de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Those are the four I would pick in today's form under Eau de Parfum concentration. Under pure perfume or extract concentration, my favorite Les Exclusives are Cuy de Russie, number 22, Coromandel, Yeah, Gardenia as well, but not necessary. It's too expensive for the very short longevity it has. So those three. Now, what are the best-selling Les Exclusives of today? Beige, Sycamore, Coromandel. Boy, and depending which parts of the world, 1957. 1932 had a moment when it was selling very well, but it's basically Sycamore, Coromandel, the best sellers. Beige. Sure, Gardenia is in there as well. There's a lot of nostalgia about Gardenia, but the major sellers are definitely Sycamore, Coromandel, Beige, Boy, 1957. 1932 had its moment in the sun as well, but a little bit less now. Those are the best sellers uh, of the Les Exclusives fragrances, you know. And in terms of um, how you can also always kind of know which perfumes sell well for Chanel in Les Exclusives form, the you know it mostly by their samples uh, their exclusive samples the four milliliter samples that they have you're going to notice if you have a good relationship to your sales associate in the beauty boutique um, they will only have four different tops five different samples of the les exclusives fragrances they will only have and manufacture the ones that are the best sellers 
So they, they don't have La Pausa in four milliliter as a sample. They don't have uh, number 18. They don't have Bel Respiro. Like Bel Respiro is on the chapa. I don't know if Bel Respiro is going to, you know, live another year. They're probably going to discontinue it because nobody's buying. They, they, they only have Gardenia, Sycamore, Coromandel, Beige, less now than before. Um, and that's it. And every time a new fragrance is released, they get the four milliliter samples for those as well, just because it's a new launch. So they, for the new launch, they do make them. So for example, 1957 had its little miniature bottle. Uh, Le Lyon de Chanel had its little miniature bottle. 1957, now it's already super rare, super rare to find a, a 1957 four milliliter miniature bottle. It was manufactured for the inception of the perfume. Now it's not a bestseller anymore worldwide. So it's very rare to find those little bottles. They don't, almost they don't make them anymore. You can, however, still find of mostly the entire range in the beauty boutiques, samples in the vials, the 1.5 milliliter or the one milliliter spray samples. Uh, those they produce in, you know, a bigger variety, bigger assortment, but Usually you see it on the four milliliter exclusive little samples, splash bottles. According to their availability, you get to see which perfumes are best sellers because they only make those samples for their best sellers. So that's a good little tip to always figure out uh, how it works. Debbie says, 1957, I actually like. Aperol Spritz says, Gardenia de Parfum smells a lot heavier than Eau de Toilette. Yes, and a lot more poisonous and green, and that's why I love it so much. Jam says, I love Sycamore. Um, Jam says, uh, is Bel Respiro any good? I have never smelt it. Bel Respiro in eau de toilette form is amazing. But in eau de parfum form, I feel they butchered it. I feel they butchered it. Hey, good morning to you, Rizology. Good morning from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Hello, my dear. Welcome. Hmm. Mm -mm. Jam asks, is anyone else a fan of Chanel Eau de Cologne? I love it. I love it, but it's not a bestseller, you know. It's not in my top four or five, but I love it. Danny says, thank you for this fantastic in-depth answer, Jacob. You're most welcome, Danny. And of course, um, of the Eau de Toilettes, I also adore uh, Queer de Russie. So, ah, uh, that I didn't answer you. My favorites of the discontinued... Uh, concentrations uh, of the Eau de Toilettes. It's definitely Sycamore. Sycamore in Eau de Toilette form is the opposite of Sycamore Eau de Parfum. Sycamore Eau de Parfum is hot. Sycamore Eau de Toilette is cold and wet and dangerously poetic. Sycamore Eau de Toilette. 31 Rue Cambon Eau de Toilette. Number 22 Eau de Toilette. Cuir de Russie Eau de Toilette. Uh, Misia Eau de Toilette, Bel Respiro Eau de Toilette, 28 La Pausa Eau de Toilette, number 18 Eau de Toilette. These are the ones I love, huh? From the Eau de Toilettes, I literally have all of them except beige. Beige I never liked. It, it, it doesn't do it for me. Um, I have here, oh, Jersey Eau de Toilette, but I also love Jersey in extra form, but Jersey Eau de Toilette is amazing. Mm. Hold on, let me show you here. Cuit de Russie Eau de Toilette, amazing. Oh man, layer this with Chanel number no. 5 like Coco used to do. Actually, let's celebrate Coco. Let's end this gorgeous uh, topic. You know, I love my Chanel's. Let's celebrate it by layering Eau de Parfum Chanel number no. five and Cuit de Russie Eau de Toilette. Okay, we're going to layer these two. Now, Coco would have layered the pure perfume of number no. five uh, and probably the pure perfume of Cuir de, Cuir de Russie. I do have the pure perfume of Cuir de Russie, but it's in another room right now. I do. I can't pull perfumes all around, but I don't have all of them here. So let me first spray on Chanel number no. five for y'alls. Okay. And let's go. 
with a bit of Cuit de Russie on top. And you know what? I sprayed a little bit too much of Cuit de Russie. Let me add a little bit more Chanel number no. 5. Oh man, this makes me so happy. And here we have the essence of Coco Chanel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you have thumb it up, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. And follow me on my Instagram, shenanigans. Uh, Chanel dedicated Instagram profile dedicated to my Chanel collection called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together. And the other one dedicated to Chanel's life called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together. Otherwise, you can follow me on my uh, Super Jacob Instagram profile spelled all together super Jacob and until next time never forget to never give up on coco love love you all see you soon take care bye